So very, very quickly, just so we all know where we are and what's going on. This is... These are the walls today. Ignore them. That's right. <laughs> This is the first temple, this is the, the Bronze Age, the Canaanite period. This is Mount Moriah added. Why am I holding it such in such a fu funny angle and not like this? Because this is the way. Because the north is roughly yeah. in that direction, exactly. And then in the first temple period, the city expanded to Mount Zion. We are here. Okay, we're at the southernmost point of the city. In the second temple period, during the time the city also expanded back to the side but then it expanded even more and even more remember the first second and third walls right. the three walls of the end of the second temple period and we are right now at the southernmost point at the pool of shiloh in hebrew lishloach is to send pool of salom or if you want siloe which became Silwan. 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 Silwan is the name of the neighborhood and of the small pool that's a little bit ahead. This became Birket al Khamra. That's the names. That's the name of the seven, in the 19th century map. Khamra okay? or Khamra? Khamra. Oh, wait a minute. Alcohol or alcohol? Khamra. No, this is called Khamra. As in red. You pronounce it much better than I do. Much better than I do. It makes a huge difference. I know, I know. <laughs> No alcohol, no alcohol. <laughs> no, no, not alcohol. Okay, so uh, if you'd arrive here till last year, what you'd see is up to a few steps behind me and not, nothing more. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, since the last year, slowly there's an excavation going on here, going deeper and deeper through and discovering a few interesting things. One, that that far wall is much more ancient than everyone thought. Why? Look how deep down it still goes. Okay? We don't know enough about it yet, but everyone thought it's maybe Ottoman. Now, we're not sure, but earlier. Two, they discovered something very interesting, that there are five stairs. You can see it better to your right. Five stairs, that above it there's a nice flat space, and then beyond them there's a flat space. Another five stairs, a flat space. Another five stairs. Six, but don't tell anyone. <laughs> and then we don't know what happens beyond. It. But apparently, there's a little floor that now is held by the white sacks, which is actually a plaster floor. Which means this was accessible to the public. What happens beyond it? We don't know. Was the whole pool a nice open floor? Was this pool just nice on part of it and the middle was just a big basin with water maybe it was much nicer but it got destroyed with time why because there's always a, a flow and the middle of the valley will be taken away the sides are very nicely preserved because there isn't an odd force disturbing them so we actually don't know <laughs> but there's a big open basin here that gets water from Hezekiah's tunnel. You remember Hezekiah's yes. tunnel? Yeah, yeah. And this is the pool that we can actually date quite well. Why? Because in a few locations, like where you are sitting and beyond, the stairs were damaged. Part of them were damaged in 2004 during the excavation, not on purpose. It happened. So they managed to actually take what's inside underneath the stairs and discovered Hasmonean period coins. Which means for us, 1st century BCE construction. Which means in the days of Herod, this pool and these stones and these stairs exist right here. So this pool is actually mentioned in many of our sources. I'm sure Asher talked about it when he was here with you six, seven months ago. But I'll quickly go through at least two of them. One, who was supposed to guide here? But he's not here. He guided already he last guided. time. I know he guided last time. I know he guided last time. I know. I, you can do it. Book of John. We are told of a blind man that walks around and he was sent to bathe in the pool of Salome, which means they weren't here. Right? They were somewhere. I don't know where. 
sent to bay in the Salon Pool. The moment he walked out, he could see, and everyone says, wow, how did that miracle happen? Uh, but the man that sent him, you know his name. Uh, what is his name? Jesus. Oh, right, Jesus. He says, he's not here. Notice in the story, he isn't there. Okay. He sent him. He flew. And flocked away. Okay. Mashiach is anointed. Shiloh, okay. So what we actually have here is a site that is mentioned and very important in the early Christian miracle sites. And that's why the moment the excavation here was announced going to happen last year, yes, they announced the new excavation is going to start. The visitor center of the city of David started receiving reservations of groups coming to see the finds. But the reservation said, they just announced the excavation will start next month. Mm. But already they had reservations of groups coming to see what, what, what will be discovered understand how important it is and in some way the city of David actually understood that you can arrive with groups directly here just like we came in instead of going from the top you can arrive with your voucher here the workers here are usually quite shocked that it happens but it happens okay so that's one another source where this is mentioned again is the Mishnah the Jewish law when we are told that the water come on stop for the water libation, for the ceremony that happens in the Feast of Tabernacles in Sukkot. Water given and offered on the altar. Usually when you offer a sacrifice, with it come some kind of bread, some kind of bread, or flour, Fruits. more accurately to say, and wine. That's how offerings are offered. There's an animal, wine, and also some type of flour or bread and always it will come with oil which means we have the three main things that are growing everywhere in the wilderness everywhere in the agricultural land wheat olives and grapes okay notice it's part of the store you can buy it on the way in the farm and bring it over in sukkot and tabernacles with this they also offered water now offering water in a sacrifice is kind of weird but the idea is that it's the end of summer and we're praying for the new winter to start and the rainy season because unlike most of the world where our tourists come from that have rain also during summer and for them a rainy day is a normal day in Israel and in this area a rainy day is an abnormal day except the last month which was quite abnormal as it is which means that rain is an issue. So now imagine they take a barrel full of water and offer it on the altar. You'll have civil disorder, everyone saying, don't waste our water. So how much water was taken from the pool of Salom, pool of Shiloh, to the temple? I'll tell you how much. You can fill that amount of water in this bottle exactly. Okay, it's about one liter. Yeah, I know it sounds very funny, but that's it. a very symbolic act. So they take a little juglet of water from the pool and march with it all the way up towards the temple and now you can parade with it with prayer and whatever you want all on the way. So this is the Pool of Salom or Pool of Shiloach and it will be mentioned in many many of the sources because it will be a major site. And then, can you see that column right there? This rolled into it during destruction. This whole place was covered up with ruins. I, I actually came here a few times during the excavation and took pictures of the rubble and debris that covered everything here. And you can actually see that everything rolled onto it and covered it up and it was forgotten within the few centuries after the destruction of the second temple. Let's say in the third, fourth century, no one knew of this place anymore. The only spot where they knew of water was the next pool that's a little bit up. That's where uh, the ceremonies will take place around the church built in the 5th century known as the Siloam Church. Come on, go back to place. There we go. Okay, so that's the pool right here. Questions?